Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Frustrated Grad Podcast. I am your host, Zach Hughes, the black dude with black lightning. And my co-host is a writer, movie fan, wrestling fan, someone who's craving that new super pig meat. Tony Hawk. Super pig meat? Yeah. He's, did you not see the trailer for the new Netflix original movie, Okja? I think that's how it's pronounced. Okja? Yes. No. O-K-J-A. It, uh, the trailer looks awesome. Uh, you should check it out uh, later. But it's about a, it's a heartwarming tale about a super pig. <laughs> that's all I'll say about it. Um, Is it okay. a kid's movie? Um. I'm not sure yet. Uh, you'll find out from watching the trailer. So, uh, how's your week been, Tony Hoffman? Uh, not not a whole lot. I was able to catch up on like the last like five episodes of Agents of Shield. Okay. Uh, before the finale, that Still came on way behind. Tuesday. Way behind. Yeah, a lot of the uh, TV shows are uh, having their season finales because yeah. it's the end of the. The traditional TV season, so yeah, yeah. I did. There was nothing at the movies to see, so I don't give a shit about aliens. So you didn't want to see Alien, Alien Covenant. Covenant? Not really. Not uh, if I have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I didn't see anything at the movies either. I I spent the week tending to my garden and uh, watching a lot of stuff on YouTube. That uh, me too. Where, that didn't uh didn't contribute to my general knowledge uh mainly i mean that's I watched pretty some... much that's what i find myself doing more often this yeah just watch fall into that <laughs> fall down that rabbit hole just like okay uh, i'll watch the next suggested video and then three hours goes by and like what did what just happened <laughs> <laughs> um i did watch some constructive stuff like i i watched some gardening videos because i I transplanted some pots Ooh. that I bought at Home Depot. How are your hoes? How are your hoes be? <laughs> my, my hoes uh, are, are, are growing at a steady rate. That's, what, that's how the hoes be. Um, Keep my hoes in order. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, other than uh, the gardening stuff, I was just watching, like, uh, videos from uh, this YouTuber named Liza Koshi. Has He's like, a coach. Yeah, this is like little short comedy videos. Spent a lot of time watching those, but generally, uh, this week has been uneventful. Um, were you uh, wearing your uh, male romper while you were tending to your garden? You know what? Uh, I, I've heard about this male romper thing. I, I, I'm not interested in one, but I was wearing a full size adult onesie. So I feel like that's in that family. Really? Uh, yeah, I actually had to change out of it for this podcast because I thought it it would have been too much for the audience. You mean you uh, have like the whole the whole thing with the with the, the legs and everything where it's like your feet and everything are covered from well, like the, covered from top. Mine to bottom. doesn't mine doesn't cover my feet, but it's like it's a full uh, thing with the hood on the top. And Do the, you have like the little opening for when you have to go boom boom in the back? It's just like this long zipper down the middle, so it's like you can zip a along the waist to open it up. But that seems gross. Like you'll be sitting with your, like the material would be touching the toilet. So I, I kind of just take it off all the way when I go to the bathroom. But, just just uh, go to sleep in your damn underwear like a man, like everybody else. I mean, I don't sleep in the onesie. I just wear it when I'm up and about. Uh, yeah, it's nice and warm. It, it definitely uh, it doesn't fit perfectly because it's like having a lot of extra room at the bottom. It's not as long as I need it to be, but it, it does it have a nice little uh, a nice little dinosaur pattern on it, or like some rubber duckies. Now, nah, for the the adult ones, they don't they don't give you as many fun options. Mine's just blue, solid like, color, <laughs> pretty much tart as blue, uh, a little lighter than that, but yeah. Yeah, that old romper thing. That's that's another. It looks uh, very, uh, very gay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, 
but uh, I mean, yeah, gay is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I I've seen it. It doesn't look like something that I would wear out in public. Uh, the short shorts. I, yeah, short shorts attached to a shirt. With all these like, flowery, uh, like Hawaiian shirt. Douche, douche apparel is what it looks like to me. Yeah, I could see some people rocking it in the uh, in the north, uh, well, river north to Gold Coast area, definitely, and around definitely. Uh, Friday nights or something like that, and uh, definitely up around um, like Wrigleyville and stuff like that. So, um, I mean, you know, those people need their own type of uniform as well. So, yeah, they they, they can't wear like the, you know, the fucking jorts and like you know backwards baseball cap and the whole t you know the ed hardy the ed hardy stuff is kind of you know ran its course you know? yeah this is the uh, this is the the logical next step in that evolution uh, or de-evolution depending on how you, you feel well. about it um, have you um i know that you hate watching trailers and teasers and stuff but did you uh you happen to see although the wonder woman uh clips and stuff i i've avoided them i haven't watched any of them i haven't seen um any of the new clips but i am hearing about like the first reactions and stuff that's all i movie. cared about yeah so they have screened stuff... it for critics uh yeah this past week but they they've been embargoed so they can't really talk yeah. about it yet until so yeah people can uh talk about their impressions i guess is what uh, some stuff that i've been hearing like without giving detail but they're generally saying that they are they're enjoying it it seems like that that's very encouraging yeah lots of yeah. uh inner uh, critics that i respect have uh sang its praises so i'm uh getting a little bit more excited about it yeah yeah um because i don't i don't want to dislike movies so it's always good to know no. <laughs> that other people are enjoying it so i, I mean just from like looking at the you know the the official trailer and everything else. It just it looked it definitely looked like it would be a good movie or at least the the best DC extended universe movie we've seen. Yeah, so it didn't far. have a, a high bar to reach over in that regard, but I'm I'm glad it's at least clearing it. It's got some colors. Yes, finally. And it's uh, not directed by Zack Snyder. Yeah, that that's probably um, that probably Why helped with that that previous point. But yeah, so I'm um, I'm perfectly fine with um, paying my ticket price now because uh, uh, it sounds like I I might not be sorely disappointed like I was I was fearing. Yeah, I uh, I like the fact that it's uh, World War One set. Yeah. I know World traditionally War II has it's been a, played to death. Yeah, but yeah, traditionally Wonder Woman's World War Two, but they've hit, that's been done to, to death, like you said. And uh, yeah, and they didn't want to seem too similar to Captain America, who also wears a shield and was heavily involved in World War Two. Yeah, it's it's a female superhero head movie, like the first one since Supergirl, but this one might actually be uh, watchable. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I'm just sad about Supergirl because, like, uh, this most recent uh, uh, Flash, Supergirl crossover thing, whatever, I, this was the first one of those where I was just like, you know what, I don't need to catch up on the other show. I'll just, <laughs> i just figure it out through context. I, I'm um, so far behind. I, I stopped watching both of them pretty yeah. much. Um, as far as Supergirl and the Flash? Yeah. Yeah, Flash is uh is, I just read is about kind of it. slipped off the the radar, and so it's... apparently the the Iris character is dead or something. Well, spoilers for me, I didn't I didn't uh, I guess I didn't get current with that one because that's that has to be from the very uh, the most recent episode, then because I know they were leading up to that future scenario where Savitar kills Iris and they were trying to change it, but. But she's obviously seen. not gonna yeah. be dead. Stay dead, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So. Because she's still on this show. <laughs> yeah, because uh, we can't get rid of Candace Patton. It would be a huge. Uh, I really won't loss. watch it after that. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, 
Uh, something, something's missing here. And didn't somebody have a disease? Did she have a disease or some shit? Or... I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't know if people have been like poisoned and had different things going on on multiple episodes. Like at one point, uh, Caitlin had a that had ice. Some kind of, yeah, she. Well, she she was infected by something. I can't remember what it was, but one of the villains got her infected with something, and the only way to save her was to release her release her inner killer frost powers but then that that uh led her to uh completely switching over to the dark side but you know the reason why i don't give a shit about this show anymore is that nothing matters because they'll they, you can just change the fucking timeline and go back in time and go forward in time like there's, there's no consequences for yeah, that does a lot to, for... <laughs> that does a lot to get rid of the stakes also it just has fallen into a pattern of where it's like okay we've got this this big villain who's also a speedster the speedster who's gonna get yeah. revealed we don't know later. who it is it's like it's like the thing with Savitar was obviously like okay it's the exact same thing we did with a zoom and a reverse flash but then it was like okay Savitar isn't a person he's he's supposed to be the god of speed then we find out oh he, he's a person too so it is another mask we've got to take off all right well there's that again so yeah it's a it's it's lost some of its steam um but yeah i i, I peek in on it every now and then but now it's 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 not top priority like it once was um have you been uh are, are you a star trek uh person the have you uh do you watch have you watched like the next generation and Voyager and Deep Space Nine and the original show and the movies? I, oh, that shit. I haven't seen all of that. I've seen probably the most I've seen of any of this series was Deep Space Nine, just because. Really? I mean, that my aunt watched it, so when I was at her house, I would see some episodes. I wasn't paying attention, but I, that's sure. probably what was on the most. Um, yeah, because uh, uh, yeah, because that was the one with the guy wh whose head looks like an ass. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the That's guy serious. who uh, looks like the guy who uh, from Home Improvement. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but yeah, I I remember just like it being on in the background, but I've never been too into it. The next generation is probably the one that I've watched the okay. most, uh, mainly because of like. It's on BBC America often. Okay. And you were a huge I Reading Rainbow fan? Reading Rainbow, yeah. Lamar Burton, of course. Yeah. J Jordy. Jordy LaForge. Uh, yeah. Your name so, is Jordy. <laughs> uh. This whole, like, Star Trek Discovery thing, I guess the trailer, came out for it and, like, like somebody put up, like, some screenshots of some of it and it, it has kind of like a Star, Star Wars Okay. Kind of look for it, and people are kind of upset about that. Well, uh, if you want that whole Star Trek vibe on TV, don't worry, because Seth MacFarlane has got that covered with his his Star Trek show. spoof, the Orville, um, which is just weird because it's like uh, coming out at the same time as an actual Star Trek show. So, uh, but yeah, I was. Uh, I haven't seen the trailer for Discovery. All I know is that Sasha from The Walking Dead, uh, she's supposed to be on that show. So that that's probably enough to get me to watch a couple episodes. Michelle Yeoh is on it too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, there was one trailer that uh, you saw that you weren't very uh, happy with. Uh, another DC uh superhero show that's not going to be in the yeah, flash in arrow the arrowverse um, yeah black lightning mhm mm <laughs> this uh, show like i, I haven't saw, actually watched i didn't watch the trailer um you sh you should uh i watched the trailer for it it the the story is basically that this guy was he he once was a superhero doing good in the hood um but like it got too much for him and he started to get old 
So he, he's like a middle-aged superhero. Yeah, yeah. So he retired his Black Lightning persona to have a family. So I think he becomes a principal at this high school where his kids go. And then crime ramps up again, and he has to return to his life as Black Lightning. And like generally, just the premise of that is like, okay, whatever, it's decent enough. But just like, I don't know, that trailer just gave me such like ABC Family vibes. Um, even though like now ABC is in the Marvel business, uh, the, it, it just still had that whole look of like something that was not quite ready for prime time, but it's going to be in prime time. Um, and then I heard it was not going to be connected to the Arrowverse. So it was like, okay, it's a DC show, but it's not in the Arrowverse. So that kind of is weird. And that, like, having those added elements to it might have helped it. But in the, in the end, I just landed on, uh, fuck it. This show, uh, it's probably going to have a short lifespan anyway. Really? You think so? Yeah, because, I mean, they're, how much room do they have for not well acclaimed superhero shows like they saved supergirl from what would have been cancellation they have it legends. should have been on the cw from the start but... yeah um but and then they have legends of tomorrow which has never really taken off and then there's all these like rumored shows in the works like the titans or whatever these different shows so like where is there room for this black lightning show that like came out of nowhere. Well, it can't be worse than, than the uh, Legends of Tomorrow was the first season. Yeah, but like, I I don't check the ratings or anything like that. But is anybody even watching Legends of Tomorrow now? It's just like I, I heard it got better. I don't watch it. So okay, I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, I know they got like Steel on there, and that the character looked cooler than some of the other stuff but like i haven't seen an episode since like the flash crossover um why so... is black lightning called black lightning mm. i give you two guesses <laughs> um but yeah so i don't know if the show will last because like you got all these other shows that are like floundering and i feel like at this point they're all floundering like arrow was the obvious like um dead weight originally um and then uh legends of tomorrow took up that mantle and then now it's like i guess you could juggle between like all of them and then flash is slightly above <laughs> but um i don't think we needed another one of these unless cw just straight up wanted to be the the, the dc superhero channel which is uh they're going on that path because if these are all on different broke, days don't fix it but it's broke. <laughs> like that's the, that's the problem. Uh, it, it, it is broke. So uh, I'm gonna watch the first episode or two of Black Lightning, but I don't have uh, high hopes for it. Uh, but yeah, I I want to support something that's black, and uh, but it it just really made me think of like, well. Instead of doing Why don't you this, watch any Tyler Perry shows then? How dare you? I'm not gonna dignify that <laughs> with a response. <laughs> but uh like it just makes me think like from seeing this trailer, it's like I, I didn't even know who Black Lightning was. It just made me think I like, just knew he was like a lower level like uh superhero from like super friends and all okay. that shit from like the seventies. Yeah, but it's like, well you had some like you could have used the same effects and like just given, well yeah but you could have given us an actual static shock show like because that's yeah. a character i'm actually slightly more familiar with he's also black he pretty much has the same powers but he's cooler and you could have uh, had another like millennial superhero that, why didn't you know, they just call it electric black man <laughs> i don't think it has the same ring to it electric black man that's gonna be More the sci-fi the version of that uh yeah but yeah there's a lot of tv trailers that came out this week i guess this was just like um trailer week because yeah because uh, they uh they set the fall schedule all the all the, all the networks yeah. are you uh did you see are you excited for for young sheldon i know you are you don't have to tell me i 
I didn't even know this was a thing until I. I didn't know until the, like last week. Yeah, uh, I just see like the thumbnail for the trailer of it, and I'm like, yeah, uh, no thank you. <laughs> like who? And it's not like the it's not a multi camera. It's not multi camera too. It's gonna be like a single camera like vo- voiceover thing where I guess like the that's weird. What's his name? Jim Par- Parsons is gonna do like the voiceover. This voice is be, like, his version of the Wonder Years. Probably. Everybody hates Sheldon. Um, that's weird. Um, that looks like garbage. Yeah. It, I'm, I'm, yeah, I have no interest in that. Whenever um, I happen to watch that show, he's always the, the reason I changed the channel. Yeah, I've I've seen commercials for it since it's in syndication now. There's, um, I see commercials for it on these different local networks and yeah, it, it it does not look appealing. Um, speaking of shows that are just for dumb nerds or wannabe nerds, the the aforementioned Orville is going to premiere on Fox. It's a Seth MacFarlane vehicle. It's probably the only Star reason Trek why. It, yeah, it's a spoof of Star Trek, which is probably the only reason why it will not be canceled immediately. But. Uh, I don't expect it to have a. I mean, who, who in the year 2017 given a Star Trek spoof? It's weird. It, like, it only has been made slightly relevant because Star Trek is actually coming back. But it's like, um, other than that, this would have just seemed really out of place. It just uh, feels like it's one of those things where because Family Guy is, is a success that he. He can get this made at Fox. Yeah. This is almost like a favor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's just one of those things where it's just like, okay, here's your here's your passion project you've been begging us about all this time. So there like you Like he, uh, when he got them to put the, uh, what was the name of that fucking thing with Neil DeGrasse, DeGrasse Tyson? The, uh, the science oh, universe um, thing. <laughs> That he produced. I didn't realize that Seth MacFarlane wasn't in, involved with that. The yeah. um, I, I, I keep forgetting the name of it, but yeah, I watched uh, some of that, uh, but it, you know, nobody I, else watched. It. <laughs> it, it, it. Maybe it was over my head because I I lost interest after a little while. He annoys me, Neil deGrasse Tyson. It was like initially wow. it was like, hey, this is science stuff. This is kind of cool, and then then he's like comment he's like giving his opinions on shit pretty much anything else and like yeah he's he, become, he basically became a, a, a meme yeah he's a very outspoken critic of uh science and popular culture and i don't think anybody's really was asking and he's like that. uh he's talking about like the fucking logic of like superhero powers and movies and whether how it would work in real life like you know it's not really dumbass what the hell are you talking about this shit for you want we want to escape reality, and you're you're kind of raining on that parade. Uh, an, uh, a show that he might have a problem with, another supernatural type of show that I'm really excited for, is um, uh, the show Ghosted. Did you see anything about that? It's Craig Robinson and Adam Scott. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's kind of like a paranormal. It seems like it's a little bit ghost. Busters, a little bit X Files. Uh, it looks fun. Yeah, and that's one of those shows I, I worry is gonna get canceled based on like production budget because <laughs> because it's like you're gonna have to do a lot of CGI and stuff like that because like that show they had a few seasons back was like almost human. It looked pretty decent, but it was set in the future and there was a lot of costs associated with the cgi and all that stuff for that cosmos was that neil degrasse type yeah that's what it was cosmos but it was like a re a remake of the original cosmos yeah. uh show but you know people science isn't as um popular now as it once was we we like to make up our own facts yeah exactly um, so there you go with that um, dinosaurs and people walked on the earth at the same time yeah and we were friends, and uh, like the Flintstones, we had yeah, like a garbage disposal, the pterodactyl. 
Yeah, and then you you would ask him like, "How'd you like this job?" He's like, "Eh, it's a living." <laughs> um, you slide down a T Rex's back at the end of your shift at work. Um, yeah, oh, the off off topic of movies, really quick. Um, I've been seeing recent political ads in uh, Illinois for anyone. Bruce out there Rauner. Out yeah, this Bruce Rauner. The fucking ele- he, his seat isn't up for re-election until what a couple of years. So it's like he's doing all this shit. Yeah, it's so weird. And and then like he's talking about all the things he'll do for Illinois. It's just like wait, duct tape what? politics. Yeah, but it's just like why are you telling us what you will do? You're the governor. Right? Governor now. You've like, been the governor for like two years now. It's like, well, step one, pass a budget. How about that? Um, but I'm also seeing like his political opponent, J.B. Pritzker. Um, of the Pritzker family. They pretty much own Chicago. Big chunks of the Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's like, isn't that like, like Pritzker? Is that the same Pritzker of Pritzker Pavilion in Millennium yes. Uh, Park? Yes. Okay. So, like, all I could think of when I was watching those, like, besides that, all I could think of when I was watching these ads, I'm just like, this fat fuck. Yeah, this guy looks like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> just, like, um, but like, all you, all, all he needed for his political um, slogan, like, you don't. Was there more black about... children around him? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's like you don't need all the stuff you're talking about. Is how you're a successful businessman. He created all these jobs, and. It, like everybody who's in who's speaking for him in this commercial, like CEO, dot dot dot, CEO, dot dot. It's like, well, like you've created uh, these. It's easy to create a job for someone as a CEO if you just give them seat money for their own business. But like his only uh, slogan needed to be, "I'm not Bruce Rauner," and that's pretty much all you would need to win at this point, I think. But I think it's like, uh, have you seen like the Facebook ads for like a this a Kennedy guy? He's a from the Kennedy family. He's he's gonna be running. I haven't seen that for for governor too. Okay, uh, well you know America loves them some Kennedy, so that's probably um, good enough. I need to I need to know more about his uh, his politics and his, his platforms. Yeah. Um, uh, all that really matters is how his hair looks. So, oh, of course, oh, obviously, what colored tie he's wearing, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, the priorities. Um, but off of that, uh, back to more important issues. Roseanne is coming back. Well, and Grace is coming back. <laughs> yeah, like everything's coming back from the nineties. Uh, how about Seinfeld? Where where they at? Um, but like I saw this. I checked out the trailer for Roseanne because I was like, okay, somewhere in here they're going to have to explain how Dan comes back to life. <laughs> then it's just like, it's just I, I don't the give a show. shit because I won't be watching it. I enjoyed Roseanne from like the, like I've seen Early 80% season. of the show, but like after the whole lotto win, yeah, I, I petered out. Um, and then it's revealed at the end that this was all part of a book she was writing. And like, I guess stuff all happened already but maybe we'll come back and just she'll just erase that section of the book she's like you know what dance still alive um i hate muslims and black lives matter sucks and yeah fuck all <laughs> gays yeah, it's funny like watching and like watching reruns of roseanne i've seen a couple recently and there was one i completely have forgotten about there was a whole episode where like um DJ, the youngest son, is in a, uh, I guess he's in some kind of play, and he doesn't want to kiss a black girl. <laughs> it's just this whole thing about them confronting the fact that their son is racist, and where did this come from? Um, it's just, it's an odd little episode, and that was one of the clips they used in, like, Remember Roseanne, <laughs> and this is, like, one of the chunks they used was, like, alright, that's not, like, the, the happy upbeat stuff that I, I want to remember from Roseanne. It's just like, okay, this was a weird episode. I don't know how to feel about it. Uh, but yeah. So that's coming <laughs> back. Uh, also, there's a, a, a new comedy about a, a guy who runs for mayor just for the sake of uh, jump-starting his mixtape. Uh, 
<laughs> oh yeah, I saw that. That was that's going to be on. Uh, what's the name of the show? I think, it's called the. It's, I think it's just called The Mayor. Is I think it's going to be on ABC. Oh, the fucking seems... what's her face? Leah Michelle's on it. Yeah, which is just weird. It seems like she just gets forced into shows like, uh, like she was on Scream Queens. It sounded like that was done as a favor. Uh, Ryan Murphy, who made yeah. the Lee, made that. Yeah, so I don't know how she ended up on this show. She's just her like square face doesn't <laughs> fit in with. Now, like, Zach. I'm I'm not shaming for her appearance. Just like from the perspective of this show, it's just like why is she even involved? Because it seems kind of uh, weird. Because like my wife felt similarly. It was like I was interested in the show until I saw her. I was like I don't understand why she's. Yeah, I'm like what the fuck is it like? <laughs> I was looking at like the the little promo picture and it was like you know you had this mostly black cast and then she shows up like oh. just like all right we, they'll they'll find some convoluted way to explain why she's a, a main character in there and not just a bit player and why she's as important as this um mayor uh character but you know you, you don't want to have too many um black faces on screen at once because people will think it's a black show you know, you don't want that. Uh, people don't but watch black is black is just people watch blackish. Yeah. Don't they? Uh, uh-huh. Apparently. Uh they watch it so much that that they're getting their own different world esque spin off called College Ish. Which on is a, it's a horrible <laughs> name. Uh it's the worst title I've ever heard. Uh, See, the whole name Blackish obviously was like the, the whole appeal of that name was that you know it made bl- sense. Blackish, like, okay. yeah, like it's not context. black; it's blackish. Yeah, it's yeah. like the content. College-ish doesn't make any sense. That no, like nobody stupid. says that. Nobody's ever said that. Uh, like yeah. you might as well just call it different world-ish because that's what it is, you know. But yeah, so. Interesting. We're getting maybe, a, uh, maybe I'll watch that show. We're getting a, another. Oh, we're getting a Grey's Anatomy spin off, spin off in mid season. Why? Like, didn't they have one of these already? That was a uh, private practice. Yeah, that didn't last. Uh, didn't that character end up? It was off like a, for a couple of years. Okay. Uh, but this know. one, uh, they haven't announced what the premise of the show is. I think yeah. there's a trailer. Isn't this that resident show? Although. I guess it's I don't know if this one is supposed to be connected because it's on Fox, so I'm assuming that's not uh, connected to that world. But who knows? Uh, I've never been too Event, interested uh, in doctor shows. No, Event Nicole Brown is going to be on that. that yeah, mayor, that mayor show. show. Yeah, so that 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 uh, is a, another reason for me to watch. Is that I'm I'm a fan of her. I've become more of a fan of her through watching Walking Dead, oddly enough, because she's a super fan of Walking Dead. Talking Dead all the time. Yeah, she's on Talking Dead, like, very often times with CM Punk. It's just, like, they became an accidental <laughs> pairing, and now they're, like, good friends, it seems like. I see them on social media uh, chatting. So, uh, that's another thing to uh, appeal to me about that show. Uh, speaking of wrestling... There's another trailer out that I, I had no knowledge about beforehand, but Glow. Yeah, it's actually a, a show about the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, which was like the peak was in it the eighties, this all women's wrestling company. I haven't heard I I haven't heard good things about it. I, I watched the trailer and I'm like it looks interesting to me. And it's funny, like all of the most recent like Netflix shows and stuff. Like when I watch the trailers for them, I never know whether it's a movie or a TV show. Like I saw the trailer for originally for the show Girl Boss, which is a show just like Tom ass horrible show. I I enjoy it. It's it's a show about a girl's journey of like starting her Based own off eBay of business. This r- real this real person that yeah that she, that she ended up like starting her own company, but her company had like like horrible like practices or whatever okay. some of it involving like like maternity leave and shit i think that she, uh-huh. she had she filed for bankruptcy so um back in the fall so all this bullshit about like feminism and girl powers is 
pretty see, much bullshit. See, I didn't know the behind the scenes of it all. So, I mean, they Wikipedia at the at the opening of the episode, it, it starts off saying like the uh, following is a retelling, a loose retelling of real events, real loose. So they probably didn't want to include all of that stuff. Um, well, like I said, like for these trailers, I can't really tell if it's a TV show or a movie. Like for the Oak, the Okja or Okja about the super pig. Yeah, like there was another one where I couldn't really tell. Like I could watch this as a series, but okay, this one's a movie. And I saw this Glow trailer. I was like, oh, this looks like a cool movie, but it's a series. This is going to be an interesting uh, journey to go on with this. But I'm interested. I've seen very little of Glow. It was a little bit before my time, but uh, I was more of a wow person, which was the like I guess the later evolution of that women of wrestling. But uh, it looks interesting to me, and it's uh, also starring from uh, Community. Allison Brie. Allison Brie. So, uh, yeah, I'm interested. Are you gonna check out the? Uh... New CBS uh, sitcom Me, Myself, and I, starring now former SNL cast member Bobby Moynihan. I I didn't know about this one. What is uh, the premise? Uh, it's a single camera show that tracks mm -hmm. the life of one man over fifty years. Okay. As a teenager in the early nineties, a forty-year-old in the present, Bobby Moynihan, mm. and a sixty-five-year-old in twenty forty-two, played by John Larroquette. Twenty forty-two. Okay, that's interesting. John Larroquette. I've seen him since Night Court. Night Court, That's, uh, awesome. Or the or the librarians. Oh yeah, he is involved with that. I the, the I don't watch the that Doctor Who like... ripoff show. The like the librarians. Uh, I've seen it's a few episodes of that. Yeah, but yeah, I w um, just based on that premise, I'm I'm intrigued. Uh, I'd be interested in checking it out. It's like. When like so many of these shows get announced, it's it's always like okay, the, some of these they are sound last. stupid until you actually watch them. And watch, yeah, yeah, like like if Bobby Moynihan's involved, I'm already on board, so that's enough to sell me on it. Then you got John Larroquette. That's that's like the one-two punch. Um, that's one thing I was curious about. I was like, okay, the season finale of SNL was last night. So I'm assuming that that's obviously going to be Bobby Moynihan's last appearance. There was no. He already, like, they already announced it. Yeah, there was, there was no like big fanfare about it. He he got in one last drunk uncle, so that was, like I'm I'm glad we got that. But, what did they uh, do for Vanessa Brer? I, I I didn't watch last night. So. I don't feel like there was anything like a. Well, she was involved in a decent number of sketches. Um, but she didn't bring back any of like her a little Jewish party uh, iconic Bar characters. Yeah. Miley Cyrus. Uh no, we didn't get any Miley Cyrus. Um uh we she was involved in a few sketches with The Rock and she did this new character which was it was funny that uh she she just started doing this character as like the uh weather girl for a weekend update and like she <laughs> she did it for the first time last week and then uh she came back this week with it and they were like well, you were just on last week and it didn't really work out why, why are you back she's like what had to get one last one in yeah uh so like it's weird to be debuting a new character at the very end but yeah that's pretty much what i saw from her last night it wasn't a, any like greatest hits or anything but uh there was a very uh, funny sketch with The Rock uh, that that involved an, an old comedy classic, uh, Farts. So that's one to check out if you're going to uh, catch the clips on YouTube. Cause, you know, what did you think of this? I didn't funny. watch it at all because I didn't give a shit. So. Did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, I thought it was one of the better ones from this, this most recent run. Uh, did you, I always uh, enjoy The Rock. Did you uh, enjoy the opening where they did the the, the Leonard Cohen song again, like they did uh, for the very the opening of the season? Wasn't that their first one with Hillary singing "Hallelujah"? Wasn't that the yeah, first yeah. episode? So that was the closed. after the election. Okay, so closing that way, it was kind of weird for the, them to do the same song, but yeah, I mean, in context, it made sense, but because of the fact that they had 
already done it it was a, a little distracting but hey um it, it, it was what it was the uh i didn't even realize that this episode was the rock's fifth time hosting uh so that was cool that he's in the five timers club uh not one of the typical people like steve martin or Melissa mccarthy that you would uh associate with that so that's cool he got his five timers jacket cool. yeah uh but yeah so that ben was, affleck yeah uh i'm trying to think there was another sketch i wanted to talk about there was a, a sketch with a child molesting robot which i thought was <laughs> 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 depends on your <laughs> sense of humor but some people that find actually that sounds really funny <laughs> yeah uh, that was, yeah, that one's worth checking out. If you don't see anything else from the episode, this one, uh, in context, it, it sounds horrible that I'm laughing about this, but it's it, oh, it it's it. funny. Uh, yeah, some people, uh, based on your sense of humor, it would it would be extremely unfunny to you, but for me, I liked it. I didn't fuck them. I'm, I'm, I'm if not anybody doesn't find it funny, fuck them. yeah, it clearly <laughs> it, it's not advocating child molestation. It's just. Uh, it's just a funny twist in the in the sketch, but it's worth checking. How out. was Katy Perry your favorite pop singer? Uh, the the fakest pop singer. Uh, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I mean she. She just she, danced. She, she flopped around and. She did her. She opened the show with her diss record <laughs> that she just recently made, which is like uh, okay. Is it about Taylor Swift? Is it not about Taylor Swift? Uh. Or Tay Tay, as they, um, as I heard a black man call her on uh, Entertainment Tonight, just like really, are you, are you doing this, sir? <laughs> um, she spits fire at Tay Tay, um, but yeah, I think it's about Taylor Swift, and I, I don't give a shit. There's actually like reaction videos for this song on YouTube now. She's like the the reaction thing is going too far. It's just like. I like yeah. really you could do it for two girls one cup and nothing man that was that was like the peak of reaction time it was like when you couldn't put the picture in the in the video and you just see the the horrified faces of all these uh aspiring i tried YouTubers. to i tried to find that video i never did i don't think i wanted to i'm glad i did um yeah and yeah, be grateful that you didn't have like uh, asshole friends that will send it to you. Oh, I mean, you, you do at this point, but you don't. <laughs> you don't want to see. That. I don't know. It's it was uh, two yeah. people eating human feces. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, it's it, it's one of those things you wish you could unsee. Now, if you want to get the the quality, uh, vomit inducing reactions as that in a, a, a <laughs> in an SFW format. Then you can just search pimple popping on YouTube. There's a lot of compilations on that, which pretty much gives you the same vibe. It's actually grosser than Two Girls One Cup. Uh, it's pimple popping compilations, um, and they've warranted some good uh, reaction videos as well. It's like legit vomiting on screen, which is uh, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, Did you yeah. know they're making a fucking dynasty? remake um, yeah i saw that on this list yes, I just like like it makes sense because of uh empire at the time of its first season it came back and was like uh, getting the CW highest, yeah but like when empire was coming back it, it was getting like some of the highest ratings ever for a few weeks in a row Not anymore so it's like, yeah it's like well that that the time is coming gone so this dynasty remake is a little bit late so I don't see it getting the social media attention and all that that uh, Empire had its first season. But there's some have old you, people who might check it out. Have you been uh, keeping up with uh, Empire? I don't know. Have no. they aired their season finale yet? I may watch it to see what dumb shit happens. I haven't seen an episode since like right after um, Jamal got shot. Like I lost interest. Last year. Yeah, it's like oh, he, he slept with Alicia Keys, and like oh, he's not gay anymore. And then these like gay av these gay advocates come out to him, and uh, they surround him and sing 
flip, flop, flip, flippity flop. Are you gay or not? And then they're trolling him with his brother's song for some reason. It's just like, that's not even his song. But, you know, I haven't seen that episode since. Part two of Toil and Trouble comes on this Wednesday. <laughs> Part well, one of Toil and Trouble came on this past that's Wednesday. That's the title of the finale? The two-part yes. finale? All right, well. Uh, I want a full report on how that works out. I ain't watching that shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how how will we I can tell you the synopsis report? of them. So while right. Lucius prepares to launch Empire Las Vegas, Cookie pulls together a team of allies to wreak havoc on the opening. <laughs> All right. Like I thought, like, like I can never keep track. Like, are they on the same side? Or are they opposing each other? I don't know. Uh, are they? Are they screwing the, or not? The synopsis for Wednesday, this past Wednesday's episode. After being banned from Leviticus, Vegas, Cookie gathers a team of allies to seek revenge on Juliana and steal her secret weapon. Jamal is encouraged to delay his album so he won't have to compete with Lucius's Inferno. Okay. All right. <laughs> that, that sounds riveting. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like I made a wise decision uh, not uh, not continuing on with that show. Because just like there's only so much stuff you can watch every week. And then when you find yourself pushing things back farther and further on your TVR or whatever service you use, you realize I, I wouldn't miss this if it was out of the rotation. So No. There you go. No. Um, but yeah, uh, like I, I have to save room for shows like Law and Order, True Crime, The Menendez Brothers, and uh, that actually sounds pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, like because they always do stories like that. ripped out of headlines, and they're now they're actually just like, okay, we're using people's real names now. Let's just do this. Uh, I assume it's because of like the success of uh, the People versus OJ. Yeah, and there was like a documentary style thing about the Menendez brothers last year. I didn't watch the whole thing, but it seemed interesting enough. Um, so kill, like killed their the fucking parents for the money. <laughs> yeah, it's weird that it's just like if you're a famous criminal in the '90s, you're gonna have your uh, time to get a reboot, just like everything else from the '90s. The so, Melendez yeah. reboot. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, get ready for that yeah. um so um think there, there was too much tv stuff this week um it, it's just like like i'm gonna have a just this long list of all these shows that i have to check out with young shelton right at the top um of course but yeah we uh talked about at the very top about a alien a covenant yeah that, uh, it didn't get good. Didn't get good reviews. Got mixed reviews. Okay. Um, so I don't do give a shit about bite. aliens, as, as I mentioned. So. Yeah. Um, it, it, it aliens was never a, a, a big franchise for me. I was more of a predator man myself. <laughs> a predator uh, man. Get yeah. to the chopper. <laughs> yeah, it was it was more my speed. Um, but yeah, so. Maybe I'll see I mean, this eventually for five dollars, but there's no or, priority. Or for or for free. Yeah, definitely. Online. Yeah. Uh, I saw Logan yeah. uh, last night online. <laughs> Just hooked up my uh, iPhone to the TV, the, you know, the little uh, HDMI adapter, and right. it was in HD and had a good time. There you go. Uh, now's yeah. Now's about the time where you would get those DVD rips, as as they say in the torrent biz. Um, it comes yeah. out on a uh, on DVD of officially on Tuesday. Yeah, I wonder how it uh, up appeared um, on your phone, but we won't go into that. I don't know, but uh, Alien Covenant barely squeaked by Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. Yeah, because uh, if I had a choice of going to the movies this week, I, I probably was still seeing Guardians. I would see that again. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I was thinking about seeing it again last week, but then it was like, yeah, I don't want. To. I saw it already. I don't have to, you know, I don't want to see the same thing twice. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's supposed to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know there's people who do that. Just like, yeah, I saw Avengers five times at theaters. It's like, well, 
Congratulations for having a lot of disposable income. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not quite there yet. No, um, but I remember like I heard somebody talk about like you should you just see, should just see a movie once because it's like like the more times you see it, it just hurt. It, it kind of damages the experience and like the. the sort it of, depends on the, the quality of the writing in the movie. Like if there's yeah. hidden jokes or a hidden like things that take a second viewing, it would sure, be enhanced. Sure. Like like I wanted to see Get Out for a second time because I know there was definitely definitely things that would have been enhanced. But, but like you won't you won't feel that magic and that, that sort of joy you have. To, yeah, there's no the reveal person. to be had. Yeah. Cuz I'm trying to think of movies that I've seen multiple times that like if they've gotten any better. Like obviously there's I, classics like Coming to America. Uh, how many movies uh-huh. have you seen in the actual theater twice? I, I saw The Avengers twice. Hmm. I saw The Dark Knight twice. I haven't seen very many movies twice, I don't think. Uh, I know I... I think I may have seen 28 Days Later (laughs) twice in the theater. Of all movies. uh, You loved it that much. No, I think I saw it with uh, relatives. And then I think I ended up seeing it again on a date or something. Because it was around that that time where I was was, was, uh, going out. Um, and now but yeah, the, there's not very many movies I've seen twice in the theater. Like I know there's movies like Bulletproof. If you remember that old movie, uh, With, Adam uh, Sandler Damon and Wayne. Damon Wayans. <laughs> I, I love that movie. I remember back in the days of uh, the shady cable boxes where you can get free pay per view. Um, there's just free pay- uh, HBO free weekend. <laughs> well, not even that. It was just like we had free pay per view channels. That's how I watched all my. Uh, original WCW pay per views, just all oh. free, uh, and there was sold out. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes they would show just they would just show the same movie all day um, because like nobody supposedly nobody has this channel, so they're just paying for it when they're watching it. So we just show this movie on a loop today. And I remember watching Bulletproof like four times in a row on that channel. <laughs> <laughs> like I was coming on again. I watch it. <laughs> like, ding, 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 yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I really, I really enjoyed that movie. Like, I like that movie. It comes on cable every once in a while. I, yeah, I, like, I think that's one the only movies that was just like, yeah, I watched this four times in a row and enjoyed it every time. Disneyland, yeah, uh, Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, but um, Carter, yeah, Carter. Yeah. But yeah, at home, this is a, it's a whole different story. I've watched movies tons of times at home. Like Coming to America, I watch a lot. Uh, Friday, that was at uh, when we got that on either VHS or maybe early DVD. Oh, Friday! I watch that every Friday. Uh, <laughs> Appropriately. Yeah, I think there's a last Friday uh, coming out. After, after so. next. Yeah, I think the Friday one, after Friday. Yeah, the next one is called Last Friday, so I guess this is the the close of the Friday uh, it's not a trilogy, trilogy or... at this point. Of <laughs> Friday, Friday. After the next next friday so i wonder if they'll get chris tucker you know that's always the question for every friday uh who the knows? question everyone uh, doesn't ask i mean they were asking it for the first one then they were like you know what day day is good enough <laughs> um but yeah so uh mike epps is a poor substitute <laughs> yeah um he, at the time he he had uh that that new fresh appeal that it was like okay it was distracting enough but then you always come back to like man where's smoky at um i think he was supposed to be in rehab that was the the way they explained it away in next friday um this is a long rehab <laughs> program <laughs> it's their rehab program he was asking for more money and you couldn't yeah. pay it should be like a, a um, he was a big star at the time yeah um uh, that's just weird thing like people that disappear and you like they just completely fall off the radar because like chris tucker he disappeared but he, i didn't think he was at the point where it's like oh he's like this mysterious white whale that everybody wants and like he didn't do much after that he did the rush hour thing but i never really felt like he was a super superstar like that but Apparently, he got paid well enough for the jobs he did do, where he could go into seclusion. Because 
Uh, I mean, I guess if you if you're one of the only leads in like a major sci-fi movie, then I guess you've made it. He's in the Fifth Element. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's Friday. But uh, I'm trying to think. There, uh, so many uh, more trailers. The other things I don't have any interest in that are just it starts to wash over you after a while. Like I really don't care about Will and Grace. Did you watch that show at all? I remember watching a couple of episodes <laughs> early on, and it was it was mildly amusing. It was NBC at the height of uh, must see TV. So it's like if you're watching like. Friends or any of those sitcoms, you'll forget to change the channel and that'll come on. Yeah, I, it got it got super annoying later on because it it basically just turned into the oh this guest star or celebrity is going to be on. Yeah, that's all I know about Will and Grace. Is just Here are like, these gay oh, these person. gay caricatures. And, hey. Yeah, um, I don't think I was ever really into must see TV outside of like I think Seinfeld was the only show I watched from that era. I was like busy at other times watching like TGIF and uh, Martin and Living Single on Fox. But, yeah. Uh, we are living single. single. Oh, in a 90s, 90s kind of world. Kind of world. I'm, glad I'm glad I got, I my, got girls. my girl. <laughs> Keep your head up. What? Keep your head up. That's right. Um, uh, they were talking the about bringing that, that back. Yeah. Where's the I reboot for Living Single? I saw something they were talking about mm. bringing that back. I don't know if it was anything serious, but yeah, I not mind. everything from the '90s was good. I wouldn't mind seeing Regine and Khadijah come back. Khadijah. Sinclair. Uh, yeah, uh, Max. Overton. <laughs> yeah, Overton Waitfield Jones the third, I believe. Was, uh, but yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Scooter. that. Or... Scooter. Scooter. Who's Scooter? Her boyfriend. Could he just boyfriend like on uh, and off? I don't remember him at all. Yeah. Uh, from like the <clears throat> first to the second season. I think they like grew up or something together and then they was they were oh, on and off. I think I remember that guy. If I'm not mistaken, he was a big tall guy like Queen Yeah, Latifah. yeah, yeah. I think that might be the guy who's playing Black Lightning, now that you mention it. Or he looks it's like that's exactly who Cress Williams. He, that is him? Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I, there, my memory is, uh, is, is working. Um, so maybe there'll be a, a, a Khadijah cameo on Black Lightning. It's, the, it's a sneaky uh, living single spinoff. And Grant Hill will make an appearance as Khadija's inexplicable boyfriend for an episode. Yeah. You know, you got to get those cameos when they're available. Um, yeah, Living Single and uh, Martin. Bring those back. And then they, and we can do the must-see TV versus uh, Fox Black Comedy Night. <laughs> black alternate comedy night. <laughs> yeah. Back when uh, Fox cared about the black audience. Yeah, they... Uh, it's, that's totally not a thing anymore. I mean, they've got Empire, but they canceled uh, uh, Rosewood because that was that was a black juggernaut that had to be stopped. Uh, juggernaut. <laughs> and uh, firecracker. <laughs> oh yeah. Speaking of uh of of juggernauts, uh, did we did we ever get around to talking about that gifted uh show, the X Men uh uh spinoff? Uh, another show in this X Men Fox universe. Uh, not really, but we can we can talk about it right now. Yeah, I know that. Um, Did you see the trailer for it? No, I just I, I just read that it doesn't reveal that much. Uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, mysterious. They, there's a mention in there that it uh, nobody knows if the X Men still exist or not. So I guess this is in some kind of middle ground between. Uh, the future of Logan and whatever happened up to the, I guess you would call it the Deadpool timeline. There's some kind of like, obviously the mutants have always been persecuted and maybe they've been uh, killed off. Who knows? Um, but that's that's a real easy and lazy way to get around, like having cameos. She's like, well, we don't know what's going on with the X Men, so don't think about it. Um, but it's just weird all these things have come out 
within this past uh, couple year timeline. It's, just, it's like Fox realized, like, oh, you realize we got the uh, X Men property? Let's do something with that. Like after all this time, we've just been sitting on it with just doing. No, the but it's movies. like the movies were doing good. Like you didn't, you don't make a, you don't waste waste that property on TV shows. They had to fuck up the movies first before they could go to TV. <laughs> I mean, I feel like they've been fu- fucking up the movies for a, a little while now, but I guess they feel like this was... Um, they're not making any money now. Yeah, that's, that's I guess they're I mean. just like, we can we can throw a couple of these characters away. They're never going to get their own movies. Although I don't think there's anybody significant involved in the, the whole gifted storyline. If they wanted to do something that would get attention, they should do a, a show about the mutant Dazzler. Uh, pop like a, singer? Yeah, just pop singer. They had these... Uh, her uh, her peak in the 80s would have given some of the same vibes as this uh, Glow show. Uh, Do you remember you? there were uh, rumors that Taylor Swift was going to play her in the fucking X-Men Apocalypse she, movie? She wanted to. Um, but That yeah. would have been that would have made me so angry. Yeah, uh, I don't want Taylor Swift involved in anything that I, I slightly enjoy. Well, in anything, Apocalypse period. Yeah, I mean, at least I would have had somebody to blame it on. If she was involved, because Apocalypse sucked, um, but yeah, this gifted show is gonna be uh, produced by Brian Singer, the man who who produces all of the shitty X Men movies that are nothing like the comic book. So great! <laughs> Get ready for people who don't wear any outfits that look like comic book outfits. Dark colored, tight, tight outfits. leather. Uh, they do have a girl on here who looks a lot like Claire from Heroes, and I think that's probably on purpose. Uh, the best X Men movie is First Class, closest yeah. to the comic book. Yeah, I'm trying to think. What was the follow up to First Class? Because I think I like Days of, Days of Future, Future Past. It was. Man, I was, that was okay. I was way too nice to that movie when it first came out. <laughs> yeah, I have to revisit it. Like, uh, I don't the really remember. The more you remember, watch it, yeah. the more you'll hate it. I don't really remember a lot about um, what's her name, Juno. Um, uh, what's her damn name? Well, that didn't make me blink. Yeah, so Juno, the Juno, super. Yeah, I don't. But like I said, I don't remember a lot of her involvement in the X Men universe. But uh, I would have liked to see more of Shadow Cat, but she basically gets erased from existence in this timeline. Uh, so you know, <laughs> X Men is what it is. I I still have never that. caught up with Legion. Uh, nah, uh, it, it it just got too wonky and uh, headache-inducing. Uh, at some point, I'm gonna binge through the last uh, few episodes, but uh, it's uh, probably no time soon. Ellen Page. Yeah, Ellen Page. It, it just slipped my mind. I was just like, okay, she's best friends with Steve Age and Super Juno. Have you um, watched the Rogue cut of uh, Days of Future Past? No. What is, uh, so Rogue is actually involved. Sookie Stackhouse is uh, yeah is um, featured more heavily. What's the difference I think it, with we, the cut? It's actually a better movie, I think. Because it's sort of like half her there and like, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah Rogue always needs to get some love. I, I'm, I'm it makes more Anna sense. Paquin. Okay, then may, then maybe that's the one I'll check out if I ever revisit that movie. Uh, Days of Future Past Rogue Edition. And does she get to to touch some people in there? So it's like, like um, so when what's her face Ellen Page character like when she gets cut by Wolverine she's bleeding and stuff and she's trying to keep him in the past and stuff like yeah. Rogue absorbs her her mutant powers and takes her place to keep her. Okay. To keep a uh, Wolverine there and stuff, and it, it it makes more sense because after like Bobby Iceman gets killed and stuff, and she like tells her that, and and she tells uh, Ellen Page's character that, and she's obviously like so distraught by that to keep to concentrate to keep Wolverine and the okay. use her powers to keep her in the path. It makes sense and stuff okay. to have her there. All right, then that's uh, and that's the one to to watch then. Um, what else do we have in the news this week? There was a uh, some uh, NXT wrestling takeover Chicago at the yeah. All State Arena last night. 
Yeah. Um, and maybe because they were in Chicago, but an interesting development. I haven't seen the results, and I, I kind of want to stay away from them because I'm interested in watching this um, this TakeOver special. But uh, one of the developments was that uh, a wrestler known as the Ego Robert Anthony um, showed up in NXT. I don't know if he's officially signed or if he was just there because they were in Chicago, but um, it's cool to see him show up because he's actually a guy I've met a handful of times at freelance wrestling shows. So uh, I'm glad to see him get a, a, a spotlight moment on pay-per-view. I got to go check out his match uh, for sure. Well, there you go. Uh, he's a big fan of Shredder from the Ninja Turtles. So he comes out in this uh, Shredder helmet and, uh, and the whole uh, local get up. indie talent. Yeah. Um, in terms speaking of, of local indie talent, he's he's one of the better guys out there. Yeah, and uh, speaking of lo- of uh, indie talent, did you see the whole uh, thing with uh, I think it was like Randy Orton, and, like Rick oh, yeah. Rogers, and uh, and uh, Bubble Bubble Ray Dudley? Yeah, <laughs> they were uh, <laughs> someone. Uh, I think it was Rip Rogers that uh, wrote something on like Twitter okay. about like. What, what indie, the the average indie wrestling match was like. It's don't take the away. Thing. Yeah, it was like dive, dive, dot, dot, yeah. dot, dive, and like it was a whole bunch of other things on it that uh, you have to like check it out because it's pretty. It was pretty funny actually. The, yeah, there, I've seen a little bit of the back and forth. Where Randy is really. Uh, for Randy somebody, like retweeted it. And, yeah, yeah for, for somebody mad. who's not very outspoken about most things. Uh, other than like all lives matter bullshit, but uh, Randy was uh, uh, has been pretty outspoken on that, and uh, coming out against the the flippy do kids out there. Um, so uh, that was a interesting thing to follow online. Um, it's it's weird that Randy would be like kind of the face of this now because like he's never really had to work. That hard in the breast and oh, he's been he's uh, born into it. Um, so uh, that's he's never had to struggle, never had to fight for anything. Yeah, he got to have his Handed. character rebooted the, uh, a few different times. He was like, okay, we're gonna make this work. Um, he he did get to the point where he, he you can see him as one of the greats, but he did have a a couple restarts um, there. So. There, there you go with that. Um, that's been like the most interesting thing out of wrestling for the past uh, month or so. Just like the beefs online. Uh, other than that, the product has been pretty stale. Social media. Yeah, I can't, can't uh, really talk about NXT from last night because you haven't seen it yet. So. Yeah. Well, when are they going to air mean, Did that? you watch it? Uh, no, I just know what the... I was following it a little bit on Twitter and Okay. I know who won and who lost. But. Okay, so I'm gonna check that out uh, today uh, and see uh, see what happened with that because uh, we we have a pay per view as well. Uh, backlash. Backlash. So um, tonight. Yeah. So I'll be uh, I'll try to be caught up before that. So I'll Shinsuke. Yeah. Versus see the debut Dolph. in ring on the main roster of Shinsuke That's Nakamura. Like the- that's the big drawing card, not the fucking Jinder yeah. Mahal, or Randy Orton. Uh... No, <laughs> of, of <laughs> course not. Of course, that wouldn't be the spotlight match. You shouldn't even close the show, really. That should be, they should open with that match. Um, the whole show should be the fashion police files, the fashion that, files with the that the, those segments make me laugh. Are, those segments are it. horrible. <laughs> They're awesome. I love Day them. one is H. What does that mean? Um, what I've enjoyed <laughs> the most out of like SmackDown specifically uh, the past couple weeks have been the Usos. Um, like because this is like the first time they've ever been given like mic time in their whole career. And I think they're like they're animated enough where they can <laughs> carry on. Yo, Miranda, right? And you have the right to remain silent. That stuff isn't the the best of it. I, I just like the uh, like you feel like somebody's creeping up behind you, but it's not paranoia. <laughs> it's the Usos. <laughs> it's just like I like uh, I like a tag team having a catchphrase like that because 
like it makes sense like it's not paranoia it's the usos because there's two of them so you you always have to watch out because one of them might be behind you so yeah. i i've enjoyed that because like there's been nobody in the tag division who's had like personality in a long time besides like enzo and kaz and the new day so i, I like people being given time to speak when they can actually um deliver more or less unlike somebody like charlotte um or Sasha Banks, but the yeah. welcoming committee. It's just this is stupid uh, again. <laughs> like I wish they had enough women where they could just play it off as a full blown uh, NWO spoof. You're just like you're gonna join the welcoming committee, and they all have their shirts. It just says TWC, <laughs> uh, but they don't have enough women to pull off that uh, angle. Maybe after hey, the uh, uh, women's summer Ray is a. Uh... Belcher said Summer Rae is healthy and ready to go, but they, they, they just can't find a, uh, you know, because they have to have, like, the same number of women, I guess, on each show and shit. And if she, if she goes on either show, Equality. they have to get somebody else on the other one. I mean, I uh, that means it's time to bring up Ember Moon. Yeah. Uh, somebody. They're going to have a whole women's tournament, a la the Cruiserweight Classic in the UK tournament. So they're probably going to get a, a, a handful of women from that whole situation. So I would like to see um, the women's division is more interesting to me on SmackDown than a lot of the other stuff. So I, I would. Oh, you don't like uh, like the Miz and Ambrose and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and Corbin and AJ and I mean, well, Tyler Miz, Ty Dillinger Miz is on Raw now. Oh, I'm sorry, but, yeah. um, Miz and Ambrose. Uh, uh, you said Ty Dillinger, and uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, like ten. You give he's, ten a zero. He's like uh, an indie version of Daniel Bryan. It's just like all that is over with him is the chant. People like saying ten, and uh, there's nothing else special about him. Uh, speaking of ten, he was he's been in the company for ten years. Is why they finally had to uh, felt like they had to bring him to the main roster. Because uh, I was looking at a, a like one of those like compilation videos. They're like here's. Uh, 10 different times where WWE wrestlers have been on screen and you didn't realize it. And uh, apparently Tyler, uh, Ty Dillinger has been in the company so long that he was involved in a Degeneration X skit where Shawn Michaels super kicked him backstage. And they were like, oh, you yeah, kicked Stan. I... And he was, he played the role of Stan backstage. So um, he's an old man and, he, and he's, he's not very good, but you know, had to let him live out his boyhood dream of being a superstar uh it's it's one of those extended make-a-wish deals um so you're yeah. saying he's not there for his talent no he's he's not a perfect 10 i mean he's he's average like for somebody whose gimmick is that they're a 10 i would say he's about a five um uh, you know to each oh. their own sometimes a perfect 10 is subjective also does a, a move now that is uh kind of like uh cm punk's go to sleep and i'm i'm never a fan of uh anybody taking anything from cm punk so just that the shield yeah i mean C cm punk was responsible for the shield uh, I, I, I just know. i just now uh got around to listening to the the two colt cabana podcast episodes with the cm punk and they're they're very funny and like I the listen, ones from but, years back over talking about yeah injuries that they ignored uh the staff infected they're, they're, he's very funny and like I, yeah. I would like to see him like do do podcast episodes and interviews and stuff more yeah i would i would like to see more of that i think he's going to be involved in uh the road rules real world challenge Even challenge road yeah. rules doesn't exist it's just called the challenge um yeah, there's like pros versus Joes or I don't know, whatever they call it. But he's going to be one of the pros uh, competing against uh, old MTV celebrities like CT and uh, Polly Walnuts. And uh, <laughs> it's, a lot of, it's a lot of people that nobody outside of people who watch MTV would know. But they're like they've made their career into basically playing Fucking... Double Dare. <laughs> Rob, what's his face from Ridiculousness? Or the... Oh, Rob Deerdeck. Is he the host? <laughs> uh, I'm just have... kidding. 
Yeah, I have to get some kind of washed out, uh, washed out uh, BMX or X Game star <laughs> to be the the host after he's blown out his knee a couple of times. A couple of uh, uh, my my super sweet sixteen uh, <laughs> participant. So this is basically like MTV Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Like that, if if that's the angle they're going with, then I'm all on board. Get a uh, every every piece of shit you can find, like that douche from Catfish. Yeah, you get the him, it's Charlemagne the God. Uh, who else you got out there? You get uh, you go old school. You get downtown Julie Brown, uh, <laughs> Tyrese, who people don't remember was the MTV VJ. See, I was trying to keep it current, man. You're pulling all these names from like 30 years ago. Because I'm old. I'm getting old. I was trying to think of who personalities I recognize from MTV, like Jesse, who run who won the VJ's search. Uh, nobody remembers Jesse. Hurt, uh, Hurt Loader. Kurt, yeah, or Hurt Shoulder, as MTV called uh, as uh, Eminem called him in a sketch. I'm Hurt Shoulder, and here's the MTV news. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, I'll check out the challenge just to see CM Punk, but other than that, I don't. I don't tune into MTV for much of anything now. No, did you? you did you even watch a single second of that dumbass? Uh, the MTV Now Movies and TV Awards, where the men and women are in the same category. No, I did not watch that. I saw the like. Um, the I just saw movie the movie with Taraji the, the movie, Henson won like a movie bunch trailers. Of that debut that's the only fucking yeah thing i got from that but i know it's like a there was a one of the actresses from hidden figures won a award in the superhero category just like really it was like your favorite hero and it was like the flash the arrow uh i think it was somebody from captain america it was like hidden figures and that one was just like she agreed to show up just like get the fuck out of here um yeah, I'm so, sure she would cherish that award immensely. Yeah, She'll display it for everyone to see. Is it still a Moon Man or is it? Oh, is that the bucket popcorn. of popcorn or the Moon Man? Okay, the whatever. bucket of popcorn. The Moon Man is like the VMA award, right? Yeah, but whatever. The video music awards, even though they don't air videos. Yeah, it's like uh, shouldn't like Vivo or uh, YouTube be uh, in charge of this show at this point? That's the only where the only place you can see music video. Yeah, it's like they they get just like I said previously, like they give out video music awards when they don't play videos. They give out movie and TV awards for shows that they are not involved in. Uh, so it's it's the MTV not us awards. So. Does the One Hundred Six and Park still come on? I think they got no. Canceled. I think that was that's over now. Um, speaking of reboots and remakes, uh, I think TRL is supposed to be coming back at some point, um, but. Um, with that news, they need to say, um, we need to bring back AJ, who I think he's AJ on, and free. <laughs> yeah, I think AJ is on Entertainment Tonight now or Extra, one of those shows. X -X Extra, or, or maybe Access Hollywood. They're, they're all one ball of rainbow garbage uh, in my e mind. news. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing AJ. I, I I, I lost interest when Little Bow Wow was involved. Uh, <laughs> or what is he now? He's just Big Bow Wow or Adult Bow Wow or he's just Bow Wow. wow. Yeah, he's just um, f fake fake news Bow Wow. Uh, Did you see some thing where it's like I, I guess he's supposed to be like having some reality show or something, and they he posted some picture on Twitter of like a. It was like a private jet, and he was saying yeah. that he was... <laughs> yeah, like he was traveling to do whatever project, and then somebody posted very soon. An actual like, live photo of him. Like, yeah, like, well, <laughs> Bow Wow just tweeted out this picture of a private jet, but I'm on a Southwest flight, and he's right in front of me. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that. Um, he broke. Yeah, so um, there you go. Fake news Bow Wow. And with that, uh, I think we could probably wrap up for this week. Is there anything else that we missed that you want to talk about before we leave? Uh, no, not not really. Just uh, All right. live long and prosper. All right. So uh, where can people tweet um, 
their stock photos of private jets to you? So uh, at Anthony Hoffman on Twitter, Anthony Hoffman on Facebook, and add Tony Hoffman Chai on Instagram, Tony Hoffman CHI. All right, and I am on Twitter at Zach from Chicago, the Z A C from Chicago. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, uh, not posting a whole lot, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try. Uh, maybe you'll see some garden pics on there. Um, but I'm on there at Z H Radio. You can follow the podcast online at Ambulance. You can follow the podcast online at Frustrated Grad. We're on YouTube at youtube.com slash frustrated grads. By the way, I'm also on YouTube at youtube.com slash Zach Hughes. Um, but you can hear the audio version of this podcast on audio. iTunes. Yep. On iTunes, Google Play Podcasts, uh, and wherever podcasts are sold. <laughs> you know, like Stitcher and uh, Player.fm and other places podcasts are free yeah really <laughs> if they're free then um why why does everybody have a patreon maybe i should get a patreon um but if you if you like what we're doing on here then uh give us a review on itunes and uh give us five stars if you really like what we're doing then you go to frustratedgrad.com and donate using that paypal button and uh if anybody out there would be interested in us uh setting up a patreon let me know if you uh uh would contribute to that because maybe maybe that's something worth looking into so with that i will say that is it for this episode of the frustrated grad podcast thanks for watching if you're watching the video version thanks for listening and that's all you get for today